Microphone not switched on. I had 97% frame drops. Are the problems still there? I looked at... Okay, the problem seems to be working. It seems to be my other internet connection that's um, acting up. I have no idea. It's really annoying. This is really frustrating. These technical issues. Annoying. Hey there, Bart, how's it going? Bruno. Captain Baus Zealin, what's up? Excuse the lateness. Excuse the tech issues. I don't know what it is. It's frustrating. It's annoying. Highly frustrating. It is what it is. So this is the second time I do this talk because I did one already and it didn't work. <laughs> but we will do Feedback Friday. Um, hey, Dr. Sheldon, how's it going? And um, we will be doing um, feedback while doing the warm up, and I will be drawing something uh, while commenting on, on what you've been doing this week. And um, I think, um, hey, Goshi, I think without um, further ado, we can get to it. Let's start the timer. I'll draw some randomness. So what we're looking at on the right is, I think, you know, clearly zealots. I think overall, um, the shapes read really well. Um, there's a good rhythm. Um, like it passes the squint test. <laughs> there, Bard. Fantastic. It passes the squint test, which, you know, blurs out the finer details and you look at the major shapes. Um, but um, there is some issues. Uh, one is um, the light, especially at the upper body and um, especially in the way you implemented the light and darks. You can see that there is a lot of... Um, high contrast ups and downs like a cast shadow light cast shadow light and you're stacking the contrast whenever you do that it always uh, breaks the illusion of uh, light consistency like it, it breaks the correct like it it flattens any volume regardless of if it's pointing towards us pointing top, downwards, upwards, left, right, any volume gets flattened when you have that high contrast uh, kind of stacking of values. And that's one of the dangers of using sticking too much to the line art. You've got to lift the line art with what I usually do is um, um, what I usually do is I, I do a lighter color layer and I sample a kind of mid-range value and then I paint away the line art so the line art goes more towards the middle ground and then I'll add back the dark parts of the shadow where it's needed. Otherwise, like on my drawings, like if I would be going dark and light on all edges, like it stops being Re, you know, relative to displacement and light source, it just becomes this is shadow, this is light, and it just stacks and it flattens the image tremendously. So, always be afraid of, of always be not afraid, always be uh, wary of it. And, uh, and as soon as you have light information, as in di light direction you have to consider those things. It's a different thing if it's flat, a flat light, a flat wash, then the problem isn't that big. But as soon as you add realistic lighting or lighting in any form, you have to consider. It's like, especially at the, the nose ring on the chest. It's very flat. It doesn't feel like it's on the chest or so on. Hey, Pixel Rabbit, how's it going? 
but overall i think the design really works it's good shapes on the arms there's good amount of details the rendering is a little bit noisy or detailing is a little bit noisy it needs a little bit of clarity to read well we can kind of guess where what everything is but there's a little bit too much of noise in there uh, but like the legs have nice details with those little uh, harder uh, hairs um, the off the arm that doesn't hold a sword on the right side which has a buckler or whatever they're called it's a little bit too short or if it's pointing forward the foreshortening does isn't working because of the buckler your French your French how's it going but overall it works silhouette works shapes work the pose work it's just the rendering and the noise um, kind of intensity you need calm points and busy points and the dangers of equally detailing everything is that you remove the calm points and then you'll just have noise even distribution of noise uh, this one It's Tamaz, Daku Tamaz. Let's have that visible. I put the pictures in Photoshop. I thought it would be easier that way. Um, overall, I think I think it works. Um, when you have smooth curves in your design like the the straps that's hanging down on the arm and that the straps that go across the torso and waist and on the leg um, you always got to be careful of the way um, the way you are placing those lines and the curves that they have if it's a similar curve um, and it's fanning, fanning being, you know, f like a fan. There's always a risk of feeling like it. every curve of that that has that same pattern belongs to each other. So when you do stuff like this, make sure that you, you break the line or you change the curve or you switch off the material or the local value or something to help. I mean, the, the central part there with the horizontal belt does help a bit with breaking that up but there's a lot of similar acting curves and they're all kind of either curving with each other or against each other at the same rate and it and with the cape with the straps hanging on the arm um, there's a lot of lines pointing everywhere and then add the two arrows or the quiver and the arrows is just you we are looking all over the place and then the the bow and it's a zigzag across the whole design uh, so r we are no longer looking at the character design we are looking at all the strange lines happening in the drawing and and that's a, a good example of um, a bad presentation <laughs> not that sounds horrible like you, your presentation is bad uh, but it's a you're not doing your character design and if let's put it like this you're not doing any favors to your character design in terms of presentation if that makes sense <laughs> that's i'm not saying your presentation is bad i'm just saying it's you're not giving it any favor doing any favors to it and um, another thing is the position of the legs and the way the perspective works like if you look at my concept art con concept art at the moment even though it's very sketchy we could in theory kind of figure out the perspective of the feet right and we can see them uh, like being planted in perspective like it's standing there but it doesn't end at the feet we have to like consider where the horizontal hor horizon line is right and then the hip bone would be orientated to the uh, the horizon line and it would meet everything in theory perspective should meet that horizon line 
And uh, what you're currently doing is that you're breaking that illusion, especially with the back leg, the hip, and uh, the shadow. It's like you're, you're uh, breaking the illusion of depth by working against it. And then um, add to that the arms, they have no foreshortening, foreshortening, which means he's like a hieroglyph in Egypt, arms straight to the side, both arms straight. There's no indicator of depth, right? Like overlapping lines like that. And there is zero of that on the character. So what that, what that does is that it flattens the depth as well. And because you put the feet in perspective, uh, and uh, all other elements are like hieroglyphs, or flat like a hieroglyph, like shoulders are flat, arms are flat, hips are flat, and then legs are in perspective, and they're wrong in perspective. Uh, just confuses what, what's happening. Um, so I recommend you, uh, whenever you're doing character designs, uh, if you have a problem, if this is a reoccurring problem, practice doing the pose first. Draw out the pose, do studies that, that will help you define the pose. And then when the pose is defined like a, like a uh, generic body type, right? That he, this character should be in, pose the character, no equipment, just naked. Figure out where is the foreshortening, how is the pose working, you know, maybe draw the pose from a different angle so you can fully understand it and do that a couple of times. So the next time you're going to just jump straight into concept, you're going to have that thought process in your mind of, okay, how is he actually standing? Where should I place the feet? If the feet are placed like this, where does the hip go? You know, how is the rotation? Because it, you should always have rotation in poses because if you're straight, if you're squared up, everything is aligned. It's extremely static and unpersonal, and it's a forced, it's a forced pose. Because in nature, you you don't stand squared up. You hunch, you lean, you tilt your head in perspective. You know, it's not like everything is aligned. It, you have to force yourself to stand aligned. So, be wary of that. In terms of design, it it works. I mean, it's not bad. There's some strange like the sh shirt ends at the same angle as the belt uh, it reads like the contrast rhythm of the design works but yeah good pose is ruining it so this is um Deerbards. old new old new um Let's move this up a bit so I can draw. Let's put it over here. And I'll draw behind me. Secret. Um, all right, so I think the new one is definitely better, stronger. Um, but the old one had a few things that worked better than the changed one. And I'll, I'll tell you what I think it is. The man is more silhouetted. The values are, are, are more narrow. So he becomes mystery. Um, in the new one, you've kind of over explained him. You have put him in light. And I kind of like the idea that he's the hidden hand, like he's the ruler. Um, Right, we can kind of. He's kind of hidden, and he he becomes the smoke kind of from the cigarette, and it's quite dramatic. Um, and another thing is the woman's proportions and angles, like like these small micro like head tilts, distance from shoulder to elbow. In this old one, is way stronger than. Uh, well, let's remove that one. Uh, in the new one. In the new one, you raised her arms up. 
uh, and you removed that slight head angle where she's like, oh, really? Kind of. Now she's more straight robotic, right? With a hunch, kind of. In the old one, she was like, mm. And I think that looked a lot better. I had a way more attitude. And you shortened the torso and you shortened the arms, which makes her head balloon, which looks awkward. You know, there's not the correct proportions there. Uh, I, I do like the improvements in brushwork. Uh, and the same goes to uh, this guy on the corner. He's a little bit like, he has that little bit of a rhythm as well, and, and we can kind of hint his face, and he becomes a second actor rather than a main focal point. The upside down aspect, uh, the kind of mysterious aspect of the background is cool, but it's a little bit flat, straight. Here there's a lot more interesting aspects, but I think you went a little bit overboard and started be over explaining the background. I kind of liked it mysterious, and there, there's a central part that in there where um, there's some black marks going towards the sun, which kind of mud, muddy, muddies the reed. And the same in the figure in the center uh, next to the cat is also very muddy and unclean lines, where the old one had a little bit homogeneously treated surfaces. Because it was dark and we couldn't see the contrast, in here, you up the contrast, but you kept some of the messiness. So you, you just got to go in and fiddle with it. Um, and the cat that he holds his hand on and the arm attached to it is very awkward. And it touches the parallel, the, the makes a tangent with the line. The hand and cat and background. So there's some good. There's some bad. I really like the more updated version, but I like some elements of the old one a lot more uh, in terms of illustrate illustrative narrative. Um, I think that's one of the funniest things with reworking a piece of art. It's like what worked, what didn't work, what should I improve, what shouldn't I improve? Should I even zoom in? <laughs> you know. So it's a really good exercise, and I'm really fascinated in seeing it. But uh, yeah, <clears throat> the pose on this one and the the focal point of the b bad guy is so much stronger here. He's like bathed in mystery, and he becomes the smoke. The bird is obviously hundred percent lost. So here we see it better. We read it better. But you added the cat, and I don't think it's needed. If you want the, the, the cat, the black society cat, do it as a lap lapel detail or something, you know, rather than here's the thing. Yeah, it's the black folks. And uh, here's the last one. I think it's Fur, Fur Sanchos. It's a, I know it's a part of the story. It's just that it becomes overstated. You could have like more, like, be a little bit more tactical with it rather than uh, dead center of the image. Clear dry. Um, it's a new, new thing I've been doing um, on the Discord. Is that every Friday, I s you know it's like a, um, it's like a motivator for you guys. That uh, every Friday, if you tag your piece of art with a hashtag FF on Discord, I will look at it on on the Friday Friday warm up and give you comments to kind of help you motivate yourself to push your pieces during the weeks so that every Friday we can kind of catch up, look at what you've been working on. Have you, for example, addressed some of the feedback or did you take the feedback for the next concept or illustration or whatever? You know, it's a little bit more of a, um, a community thing. So 
whoever tags FF on um, hashtag FF on share your art on Discord every Friday I will look at it and uh, comment clear dry uh, I, I kind of like it I like looking at your, your your stuff as well you know it's fun to see what the community has been up to all right um, next one for for I think this is for Sancho's for I think character design of the month Facebook group um, I'm not sure about the topic but overall impression um, colors are cool I really like the red and green and yellow combo this is very pretty and very um, iconic um, his leading arm well actually both arms are wrong his leading arm is way way too long it's down yeah it doesn't make a lot of sense that it should be that long compared to the legs and if it's uh, like a foreshortening kind of deal uh, you really need to indicate that he's raised the arm but then it shouldn't be that long so it's a little bit confusing the torso is either too short arm is too long legs are it's a little bit like you took it all in a <laughs> and shook it and like okay long arms short torso long legs long upper legs lo short lower legs and it's a bit confusing overall and then i mean here's the shoulder right but it goes all the way like that a bit confusing and um, the back arm the lower the lower arm forearm is way too long hey Cosmoverse have a great day good luck at work and thank you for joining I will probably stream in the weekend I feel like it Zealin indeed Zealin is kicking ass really hard at work I love the new um, project Zealin has taken where it does a bug army and works the concept up and I said um, yesterday that it'll be in a, in a year I would say Zealin is hired for sure within a year if if Zealin is going at this pace for sure it will be a working professional in no time anyways back to Ferzanjo yeah so overall the pose is off the anatomy is off um, it would be the same suggestion to the Oh no, the name elude me. This new person. Was it Tamas? Tamas. Whew. Good job, Brain. Good job. Mm -hmm. Freeze. Don't understand what you said. French, French, huh? Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, so I would same suggestion like for Tomas would be to draw the pose first, push the pose first, figure it out. Um, Captain Bows, really? I'm not getting any warnings. Uh, I apologize for the freezing. I don't know why though. Uh, the only warnings I had was on uh, my other line, internet line, when I before I restarted the stream. Strange. Anyway, so redraw the pose. Um, figure the pose out fully. Explore it. Um, res do research. Do studies. 
figure out where, how is the clavicle actually working, how is the uh, bicep, tricep sitting together in this pose, uh, how much do you want to push the perspective, how, how, many, how much do you want to push the foreshortening in terms of dynamics, you know. You shouldn't do that at the same time as you're figuring the design out because you're shooting yourself in the foot a little bit. Um, so I would recommend you redraw the pose, keep this drawing, don't remove it, do another drawing of the pose where you figure it out, um, do some studies, look at references, uh, how do you want it, how dynamic do you want it, because at the moment now it's a little bit like, like tuck the arm out from the side, straight out, and the other arm is kind of, but the shoulders is all, and the head is all, and legs are... It's a very awkward and nothing is flowing together. Um, so do do it like life drawing, the warm-ups on Mondays. You know, sketch the pose out, exaggerate the pose, and then um, add knowledge onto the pose um, so that you kind of figure out um, what it what it should look like. And then you can look at references of other people's art, for example, if it's a very, um, what's it called? If it's a very uh, unorthodox pose that you really hard to find uh, references for. But dancing is usually a really good point. Hey, Vibas, how's it going? Uh, Pixel Rabbit, indeed, the VOD will go up. Vibas, I'm good. I'm good. Friday, Feedback Friday, community event. Oh, yeah. Kind of late, indeed. But that's okay. That's okay. You made it. I'm glad you're here. But overall, I think you're on point, um, uh, fair. I think I think you're. It's fair, right? Or have I been talking about the wrong person all the time? I'll let me double check the name. Fair. Whew. Um, but otherwise, color and and design looks like it's on point. Digging the sword. Uh, it's just that really awkward pose. Your um, you're ruining the design by presenting it uh, in less than ideal uh, situations. So that's why um, there is this saying, right? Um, like hands are the co-stars of the actor. Like if your hands are like dead fish that hangs or there's no structure to the hands, like looks like hot dogs, you don't believe the emotions. You know, if I'm angry and my fingers are like this, and I'm screaming, ah, it's like, oh, okay. Or am I like, oh, then you're like, okay, I get it. I can just show you my hand and you could get like my emotion, <laughs> my emotional state, right? Um, add that with pose, add that with, with you know, weight, uh, dynamics, and it all keys into each other, regardless of how brilliant the design is. If you're in a really awkward pose or like broken anatomy, it doesn't matter because it's, it will instantly stand out and it will ruin um, ruin the overall impression. Let's say it's like driving a car and one, one of the wheels are oblong. So you go drunk, 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 but it's a great looking car. Hey, Sketch Tech, how's it going? So, as an example, if you ever look at any of my warm-ups when I'm sketching a character, I the first thing I do is define the pose, define the perspective, define the depth, 
and then I elaborate. I, I never go design pose because whenever I do design and then the pose, it's going to be stiff, dead and broken. And of course you can do it at the same time, like on this one, I mean, obviously this is nothing to call home about, but I've been, the design, I've been designing at the same time as I define the pose. And I've been changing it up as I go along. But it's a, there's something to be said about committing too fast and jumping, jumping the gun. So take a step back. I would say keep the design, keep it in mind, redraw it, and usually it's going to be better. Those times where, let's say, you, you, you lose work, a work file is lost and you have to repaint it, you repaint it twice as fast, twice as good <laughs> to, to get to, 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 get to, to, to uh, where you were, right? uh tech no i don't i not i don't always start with the values uh, i use a lot of different techniques but uh, whenever i do stuff like this is yeah I, I start with values and big brush and then as i go along i define uh, i decrease the brush size and refine the light source as i go along but most of the time it's it's the standard like big to small rough to refined uh, process And I'm, I'm very, um, I'm confident in designing with value at the same time. So it's, it's not that I'm accustomed to it, but I do do a lot of different processes, line art, paint, uh, black and white, it doesn't matter. It's all in a day's work. I mean, sometimes when I feel fancy, I start with the blue, you know? <laughs> I mean, we're just meme after meme, hot dog and milk <laughs> and blue. I mean, everything is better blue, obviously. All right. I kind of did something while giving you guys feedback and looking at your work. Um, I guess this is what you can do in half an hour when you are split, <laughs> splitting your task in two. You get a shitty drawing and probably, hopefully, okay feedback. Um, but yeah, it's good stuff. I, I'm really happy to see what you guys are doing. It's really impressive. I like. I like seeing yourself that you, you have a goal to, to work towards. It's a little bit like a soft uh, two-week challenge. Um, I think it works better that way, so the two-week challenge isn't a massive project uh, for my end. Um, so it's a little bit like a, a chill two-week challenge. It requires you to be a little bit more driven rather than the two-week challenge where you were a little bit more accountable. Um, but nevertheless, I still like it. Uh, do you? If you like it, we'll keep doing uh, Feedback Friday. I kind of like it. It's a fun. Um, it's a fun thing to do. For me, at least, and hopefully you guys like it. And if so, it will be reoccurring. I wish I would have had this starting out many years ago. Some pro talking about my art every week. <laughs> Alright, let's find someone uh, to raid. Uh, yesterday we raided Tofu Senshi. Did you guys like raiding her? You can raid someone else. Monori Rogue drawing a cowboy. Warmix, what's Warmix drawing? Ladies, 
Sanjanasa. Oh, let's raid her. We haven't raided her in ages. She's a traditional watercolor or gouache painter. Hey Gino, welcome to the end. So we're gonna raid Sanjanasa or Sanjanasa art, traditional media painter, really beautiful, lush watercolor. It usually does animals, friendly. So fingers crossed she'll stay for a while. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks for the hanging out. Thanks for hashtag FFing your work at uh, Discord for me to have something to talk about. Uh, I might stream over the weekend, most likely. I feel, I feel it in my bones. I need to do some personal art. Um, have a great one. Oh, tech techs, calm down, calm down. <laughs> Have a good one, good night, and have a great day. Toodles. <gasps> Wrong button.